Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about LICE, L-I-C-E. You've heard about that before, okay? Maybe you got a note from school that some kids have LICE. Be cautious, watch over your kids, check their hair, check their clothes, and so on. Okay, sit back, let's go. The description is essentially that if you're talking about a single one, that is blouse. But in the course of this presentation, I'll be using the plural form, lies. They are insects and they are wingless. So they can fly, they can jump. They belong to the order of Phytoptera and the family particularly D. That is why we have pediculous humanos affecting the body called corporis or the head called capitis. But you also have another one called pediculus pubis, affecting the pubic region. They are parasites and they are obligate parasites, meaning they cannot live or they cannot survive without host. And their hosts are mainly humans and other mammals, and they can be found in birds. The eggs are called nits. So in the course of this presentation, I'll be talking about nits. That means I'll be talking about eggs. And the larvae is called nymphs. You will either be dealing with sucking lice or chewing lice. Lice live on people's skin or hair. And there are three major types. The head lice is called pediculosis capitis. The body lice is called pediculosis corporis. The pubic lice is pediculosis pubis by Phytrus pubis. In the literature, you can find crab lice that is pubic or genital area, and the pubic lice are transmitted by sexual intercourse. Pediculosis ciliaris will be infesting the eyelashes. They are caused by an agent called Pteriasis papyrumpi. Like I've said earlier, they are not flying and they are not jumping. Lies on the law. I decided to bring this out very clearly because when you find pediculosis pubis or ciliaris in a child, you have to rule out sexual abuse. And if you prove further, then you might have to report to child and age services for further investigation. So save your own license when you find Pediculosis pubis or ciliaris in children. Suspect child abuse, please, and report to CAS. Pediculosis capitis is found worldwide in poor people, more in children, slightly more in females. Racial predilection is equivocal. Female loves leaves for months. They live within the air base. The eggs could be up to seven to ten. They are called nymphs, and they can hatch in eight days. Nymphs from the eggs will mature in another eight days, and the adults will be sucking blood. They can survive up to 55 hours outside the host. Transmission. This is the key. Because with that, we'll be able to guide against it. There could be direct contact with infested person. So it could also be as a result of use of the same comb or towel or dry. So when you're sharing common personal effects and bearings, you are likely going to acquire it from anyone infested already. In case of pediculosis pubis, sexual contact will be the source of transmission. Clinical features, pruritus, and that may be up to three weeks or longer before you even notice that. You can also see excoriations or scratch marks. There may be secondary bacterial infection on top of that, and the cervical and neck regions will have lymph nodes that are enlarged. The diagnosis is essentially that you will be suspicious that there is lies when you find the following. 
1. Scarf pruritus. Persistent pleuroderma around the neck or persistent pleuroderma around the ears. You could visually see live lice, and when you use wind combing and you are looking for knees on live lice, after applying lubricant, you might be able to see some. Or you are able to pick knees even after you have successfully treated the case. That doesn't mean you haven't done a good job. You have knees can persist after a successful treatment. I would personally prefer hand lens, and you have to screen for other socially transmitted infections when you are dealing with pedis pubis or pediculosis pubis. What are the differential diagnoses? It could be air cast, could be pedra, could be seborrheic dermatitis or atopic dermatitis. The treatment is essentially that you can manually remove it or you apply topical agents like dermeticone or orally you can use vermectin or orally also you can use septra. Lidensha pool is contraindicated because of neurotoxicity and physically you could even shave off the entire hair. You can have electric comb and heated hair to help. You may repeat topical agent in seven to nine days. Also, part of the treatment is that all household members should be examined and treated for head lines. Wash all the clothes, bedding, hearts, knees, and so on. Please eat dry all of them. You may fumigate the entire house if you can afford that. Please treat sexual partners of those with pediculosis pubis or pediculosis ciliaris. You can manually remove some lines and nits particularly the ciliaries around the eyelashes, bedding and clothing in hot wash and hot dry place. There are some topical agents that you could use here, pyretrins and pepperoni butoside. You leave that on air for 10 minutes, then rinse off, repeat in nine days, and the individual may have skin irritation. Permetrin 1% could be applied on the air for 10 minutes to rinse and repeat in 9 days and the individual could have irritation or breathing difficulty. But if the individual is allergic to it, don't use it. Malatian could be used, but it's contraindicated in case less than 2 years. It should be left on for about 8-12 hours and washed with shampoo. They repeat in seven to nine days. It is flammable and irritating. There's possibility of respiratory depression and bad odor. You use benzene alcohol, apply on the air for 10 minutes, rinse and repeat after seven days. You can also use pinoside, but that is very expensive. You can also use ivermectin. Remember, I said you can use ivermectin orally and septra orally. But ivermectin topically is very expensive, but if you can afford that, you can apply that on the air for 10 minutes and rinse after. You may repeat in 7 to 9 days. Prevention. As long as there are eggs or lice, it can spread to others. So don't share stuff like that, clothes, combs, towel, hats, etc. with anyone infested and already known. No sexual contact with someone who has public lies. Education on the spread and tell the parents if there are cases found in schools or daycare. Periodic inspection of children and elderly hair will be very helpful, including their bedding. Pediculosis pubis, called pituitaris pubis, is caused by an agent called pituitaris pubis, and pedicularis ciliaris, infesting the eyelashes, caused by an agent called pituitaris papebrarum. And with that, I come to the end of this short presentation. Kindly go over it, pause where necessary, and take appropriate measures to prevent. I prefer prevention. Thanks for listening. Kindly remember to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it.